Um, and we're glad you're watching Morning Express. We are spicing things up, as you heard from James, and we're talking about how you can get your marriage to work hard to get things on that right path. Of course, marriage is meant to be that lifetime commitment. And as is the case with life, there will be ups and downs and challenges. So how do you go through those without necessarily going the divorce way? And we'll have our phone numbers on your screen, and you can call in and be part of our conversation with Chris Hart. Good morning. Good morning. So when people get married, most times, ideally, it's a happy moment. The first yeah. um, several months and days, you're like, yes. Woo, I'm married. It's a good thing. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, but the sad thing is, for a lot of people, it begins to drift away. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's most people's experience, is right. that it starts on a high and then it begins to settle down. And for some, of course, that's a brief blip. It, they sort everything out and, and they're very, very happy. Mm -hmm. It is possible to be very, very happily married. But for a lot of people, they're not. And they need to ask themselves, if they're not happy, what do I do about it? Okay. Um, for most marriages, <coughs> what point after the I do's walking down the aisle do we start seeing them experiencing problems? Well, for most, to be honest, it's almost immediate because okay. it, it, you're on such a high as you go through the tail end of courtship and the mm -hmm. excitement of a wedding. Almost nothing could match that. And so inevitably, as the weeks go by afterwards, you get back into the routine and, and everybody ends up feeling... Oh, is this all it is? You yeah. know? And I think that's normal. I think that is exactly what happens to everybody. Right. But for some, it gets worse. You know, it continues to keep going down. And those are the people who have to ask the question, what should I do about this? Mm -hmm. Because marriage is supposed to be happy. Mm. It is happy for a good proportion of the people. So what's wrong? with mine if it isn't. I yeah. must think about that. Okay. So we want to focus on <coughs> making sure that no matter what it is kept going because important that that confidence which in some cases fit, seems to be fading away that not too many people have confidence in the institution of marriage. Have you noticed that? Oh yes. I mean that's very true but y you must remember that the basic statistics mm -hmm. say that people who are married are happier than people who are not married. So, one way or another, marriage does work as an institution, mm -hmm. and it should work. And so, if you are in a marriage where you're not happy, you should do something about it. There is something wrong if you're not happy. It's not supposed to be like that. Okay. <laughs> so, people in marriages are happier because... Well, the root cause is usually honesty. If you are in a marriage where you cannot be honest with one another, mm -hmm. then you have to ask yourself why. And, uh, I mean, the problem is, it might be something trivial. It might just be that I can't be honest to my wife because whenever I say something to her, she criticizes me. Mm -hmm. So I, I shut up and I start telling white lies, you know. But it might be because I'm doing something terribly flaky. And, and you know, there are things I can't tell her. Yeah. Or vice versa. One way or another, you have to sort those issues out because I don't think people realize how liberating it yeah. is to have a spouse you can be 100% honest, honest with. with. Yeah, yeah if you can do that, a whole huge piece of stress drops out of your life and suddenly life is much better. Okay. So if you find you can't be honest with your spouse, you really do need to, to do some soul searching and mm. say why. So honesty is a big one in keeping yeah. it going and keeping it alive um, through all the years that you yes. have to be able to... You know, to one, one of the problems is that a lot of marriages start dishonestly. People have already got things sure. that they're not talking about mm -hmm. before they actually walk up the aisle. If that's happening, if you're in the late stages of courtship and you realize that there are secrets, then you really should question whether you're doing the right thing. The right thing. Yeah. All right. And if you are in a marriage and you realize there are secrets, you need to take a deep breath and decide, you know, what am I going to do about this? Mm. Am I actually going to start being honest with my spouse? Okay. Um, in making it work and getting <coughs> it spiced up, um, for some, because this is a person you're with every day, mm. pretty much for most who, you know, not working in two different towns or not too busy mm. in terms of their work, so they're in a house together. Some are bound to get bored, especially men. There's nothing new, perhaps the love making is the same, the food is the same, same kind of things expected. So, how do you get it to the next level where 
you're still interested that today I still love you as much as yesterday you know it, it, with what you say I don't I don't think I agree with really? I, I actually think there's a great pleasure in coming home to the same person and knowing that what their habits and characteristics are I, I, I know lots of people but doesn't say, routine get boring I guess uh, maybe it, you, it shouldn't be routine it should okay. be a constant process of discovery every single day you learn a little more about each other and you and you tell each other about your exploits at work and what mm. all that sort of thing it can be a very very enjoyable experience and people they hype up the joys of the new conquest but actually <coughs> the, the new conquest is the same as the last one and the one before that and you know the whole of life is like that yeah so I don't think really that novelty is an issue in marriage I mean clearly people should there should be novelty you should but be trying out new get bored literally and they will <coughs> cheat because they want something new a new adventure a different way of doing things somebody who will say something i don't know they're those yes i i hear you i think obviously it is the responsibility of, of all spouses right. to produce a little novelty for each other okay. i mean a new recipe for heaven's sake you know a new restaurant and um, <laughs> dare i say it uh, some new antics in bed you know it is perfectly possible to do all these things and human ingenuity is limitless so it ought to be possible to mm -hmm. find all the novelty you want with one person it ought to be yeah. and if you're not finding that novelty then it's basically because people have well, they've got bored. They don't want to do it. It's not that there isn't novelty available to them. They stop trying. So people should not be lazy and afraid to be creative. Yeah, and you're dead right. And, yeah, because <laughs> most people are. They imagine. I mean, he liked it yesterday. He liked it today. But yeah. the idea that you cannot keep doing same old, same old. Find you new know, ways of doing stuff. Yeah. A little bit of novelty every single day is a very good idea, but it only needs to be very small things. To, you know, the amount of effort you have to put in is quite small. Okay. So if you are not finding that little tiny bit of novelty, then really it's because you're not trying. And of course that's another major issue that causes people to be unhappy in relationships. Mm -hmm. People stop paying attention to one another. Right. They literally ignore one another. Mm -hmm. they, they start neglecting each other. And in fact, I know it doesn't say this on the divorce certificates because of course it's not one of the agreed reasons for a marriage to fail is it yes. but the real reason why most marriages fail is neglect okay um you've mentioned antiques and let's talk about that a bit because it's a big part of marriage in, yeah. when talking about the bedroom <coughs> and for some people it gets to a point when the other party introduces something new and then they become suspicious like hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where did this come from? Where yeah, did you learn yeah, this? You know, yeah. we're not doing this before, so yeah. <laughs> How yeah, do you bring that in in well, a safe way? You know, I think the thing is this. Um, the bedroom is always going to be a battleground unless you're able to talk about what you do there. And a good sex life is founded, it actually starts with the conversations by the kitchen sink and on the sofa and over the dinner table. If you and your spouse can talk about your sex life, every aspect of it, then you don't have the sort of issue you've just been describing. Mm -hmm. Because the, the idea, the little bit of novelty is first discussed over the dinner table and you, know, you, you debate it and you think about how you're going to try it out and all the rest of it and of course by the time you actually get to the bedroom mm -hmm. you're thoroughly looking forward to it so I think one of the big mistakes that a lot of couples make is that the only time they make love is in the bedroom in the dark undercover and they don't talk about it before or after and then they wonder why it gets boring yeah it's not boring making love is not boring and talking about it is even more exciting yes. but lots of people don't do it okay so talk about it yeah, because when you're dating, you find that that will happen. Those conversations, the little messages when you're yeah. in the workplace. Hey, baby, I'm thinking yeah. about you. Yeah. So that still needs to be there, sort of like yes. setting the pace, <laughs> even in marriage. You know, it shouldn't be the boom. And you're dead right. Yeah. I mean, if, like I say, if you've ended up in a marriage where the only time you make love is in the dark, in the bedroom, 10 o'clock at night, then something's gone wrong. Mm. Because in a good marriage, you should actually be making love 24 hours a day. You should be thinking about one another 24 hours a day. The messages, the, the conversations, the touches. You know, when you're standing by the sink doing the dishes, mm -hmm. you really should be, you know, to be frank, you should yeah. be making love a little bit. Now, do that, and you're not going to have any problems with your sex life. Okay. Um, in terms of just, you said there's so much one can still learn about their spouse. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the ways that could be used 
majorly to spice it up and to keep it going. Um, what are those ways that we need to open our eyes to, to be very, you know, aware of the fact that there is room, there is all this room to still learn more, to still appreciate this person in different ways than we knew before? Well, I, I think a good starting point is to really try and understand one another. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to be lazy about a relationship with an, a person you're very close to. You just take them for granted and you don't think. Yeah. I mean, start by trying to understand why they behave the way they do and mm -hmm. why they say the things they do. And the more you think about it, in a, almost like a scientist would, the more you understand one another, the happier the relationship's going to be. And you know, people could do worse sometimes th to just go online and do a personality test and compare each other's personality test results and talk about them and mm -hmm. try and understand, you know, why is it that this person likes to go out partying all the time and the other one prefers to stay home and read a book. Mm -hmm. All these things are written in the personality. Understand those things, then you stop thinking this person's weird. You know, you begin to understand that's how they're built. Mm -hmm. And as you, as you do that, that's a, that's a lifetime exploration, understanding yeah. someone's personality. And also, <coughs> I think the place of just the special treatment, the extra, what is not done every day. Of course, you'll eat every day, you'll sleep, you'll say hello or whatever, but isn't there, shouldn't each couple always consider once in a while getting to this place where this person feels extra special that that would keep the marriage going and fuel it up I, I, there's nothing wrong with that and obviously a lot of marriages go like that you know the people have date nights they go out and they they make a lot of point of finding a time to make a holiday and all those sorts of things but i really do think that real affection is expressed in small moments all the time every day mm -hmm. uh, the smile when you make a cup of tea the fact that you've made a cup of tea in the first place you know all those little things are what really make people feel loved and cherished mm. the big gestures you know the sort of tens of thousands of shillings to go to Mombasa hmm to be honest it people start thinking you know why are you doing this have you got yeah. something to hide <laughs> you know they'd rather see you every night making cups of tea talking enjoying each other's company and learning how to talk to one another and, and mm -hmm. like I say being honest so that I can literally go home and tell my wife all about the little things that have happened during the day and enjoy her reaction to mm. it. Lots of people just don't do that. Lots of okay. people walk in and they ask a couple of brief questions about the children and the next the next thing they do is they you know, pass the salt and you know, there's no yeah. conversation going on And the newspaper and TV and, the <coughs> and there's not much of a one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. Uh, but there's also, of course, conflict. It's, it's relationships, it's life, it's normal. Um, so where, uh, where is the place of that in as far as making sure it does not be, bring the dumper into the relationship, into right. the marriage? I tell you a very good habit that, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. that a lot of couples have. They restrict their conflict to known times and places. Okay. In other words, they agree that if an issue comes up, they will simply say to one another, look, I think we need to talk about X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. Get your diary out. When can we do it? And so they'll agree perhaps the next day. They give each other notice. And then they go back to doing whatever they were doing before. So in other words, nobody ambushes. Nobody mm. suddenly mm. finds themselves in the middle of a row. Right. And they also have the habit of having their discussions at a particular place. I mean, some people nominate a specific coffee shop. They always <laughs> go to a particular coffee shop to yeah. talk about things. Yeah. Or they sit at the dining room table. The point being that you don't have rows in bed, you don't have rows on the sofa, which means whenever you go and sit on the sofa, you're going to have a nice conversation. Mm. Nothing is going to go wrong. So if you start by putting the putting a, a little fence around the arguments, yeah. then arguments become something that, in a sense, you almost look forward to. You're right, we need to, to discuss it. this. You okay. know. So you it doesn't come as a shock. It doesn't come as a shock. <coughs> and we'll talk more about that after we speak to John. John, good morning. John? Yeah, I'm here. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Go ahead with your question or um, comment. Uh, um, I have a wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, she stays in Kisumu, me I stays in Migori. Sorry? And uh, she stays in Kisumu, me I stays in Migori. Uh-huh. And uh, all along, she has been alone the other side, and she's not even... Hello? Yes, we hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, she's not, she's not behaving as a wife. Uh, she's not... Uh, <coughs> I, I should be looking it from the, the, house, the house where I am in Migori. Mm -hmm. She doesn't come. She does her own thing. She buys up uh, some flowers in Kisumu. And she does, she doesn't bring me on board in anything she does. Mm -hmm. And yet, 
somebody that uh, has gone to their, their home, have done all the traditional things that we need to do. Right. She is my wife whom I love. I want you to help me out. I can bring her back on board and to be a good wife. All right. Have you discussed this with her? Have you expressed these concerns? Have you told her that you're not happy with the, how things are going? I've, I've brought in a pastor that uh, oh, to help us. We talked with the pastor. Mm -hmm. And in fact, even uh, some two days ago, I did the same. But she's somebody who keeps quiet. I don't even understand what is happening. All right. Another question before we let you go. Other than the pastor, have you had your own one-on-one -on -one conversation where she just tells you, shares with you what she thinks or feels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's bring it to Chris and he'll tell us. Thank you so much, John Mark, for calling. Baraza, good morning. Barasa? Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi, Sophia. How are you? Awesome. Thanks for calling. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of the show. And, and Thank I, you. I just have a question. On, uh, when Dr. Hart started, he started by saying uh, honesty is very important in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to ask him, where do you draw the line? Because, you know, sometimes honesty is what brings this problem <coughs> to relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, for instance, uh, your spouse asks you, honey, do I look fat? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, um, um, if, you, if you give your honest uh, opinion, if, if she's fat, you know, definitely problems are going to begin. Okay. Yeah, yeah and there's also <laughs> many things, uh, like uh, maybe, maybe you are out with friends, you know, there are very many things you cannot tell your spouse. And mm -hmm. I just want him to maybe enlighten me on that. Where do you draw the line when it comes to honesty? Awesome. Very good question, Baraza. Thank you for watching and for asking. Um, let's begin with John, yes. who's living in two different towns. Yes. I got that right to the wife. And he's talking about her being a good wife. You know, when they got married, he envisioned this marriage, this yes. union that would be everything he dreamed about clearly it's not playing out the same yeah. they've had the conversations they've even enlisted the support of a pastor but he's still not happy yeah i mean i think what's happening there is that his expectations as to how marriage work and her expectations are different mm -hmm. um, she's obviously a very independent lady she's quite happy to get on with life yeah she's her doing own. her own thing she's doing her own thing you know she's making her own decisions her own investments whatever and of course, because her husband isn't there every night, you sort of sympathize with that, don't you? You know, she's got to get on and, and live her life. The, the real cure to the problem they've got is to live together, of course. And unless they are people who find it very comfortable to live in two separate towns, yeah. which clearly they're not, um, they must get together somehow. I, I think they probably will need to talk to a real expert. With all due respect, pastors have got a one-track mind where mm. marriages are concerned. Mm. They need to talk to somebody who can establish what it is that they're both expecting and why those expectations are not being met. Mm -hmm. And then there's a chance that they can do something about it. But yeah. he might simply have to accept that this is the way she is, this is the mm. way she behaves. And if he loves her, then let her be the person she wants to be. Right. And I agree with you because in a sense it's, it's very difficult because it comes across his expectations with people living separately it would be hard to be able to yeah. achieve yeah. because perhaps a different side of her would be seen by him if they're in the same house yes. so I, I guess that a big part of helping move this forward and making progress on it but also as you said getting expert help yes I think expert help would be very valuable the only other thing he might think about doing is thinking on a much longer time scale about how is he going to live in the same place as her mm. I mean I'm assuming that he's got a job in Migori and she's working in Kisuma yeah. um, he should start wondering about self-employment or whatever he needs then in yeah. order that they can yeah. get together right and also being clear as you said on expectations mm. but I think that's usually always a huge thing uh, with couples uh, when my expectations are different from yours or when I yeah. don't understand your expectations y yes I mean that's the real key I mean during courtship that's one of the most important jobs that couples have is mm. to understand each other's expectations what people expect from marriage right. and you know it's it's tragic but people go into marriage without doing that sometimes mm. and five years later you discover that one of them wants a family of five and the other one doesn't want any children sure. you shouldn't do things like that like so that. you must understand expectations yeah. and you should go 
on asking questions about expectations all the way through your okay, marriage because right. they change. True. Yeah. So hey, they need to have also that conversation with the wife. This is my expectation. This yeah. is what I think you yeah. should be doing and I should be doing as well. Yes. And in a nice way, not in a, you're not doing this, you're That's not exactly a good right. person. Mm. Yeah. That's um, one of the reasons why an expert is probably helpful, helpful. because an expert is going to say that these expectations are okay. Now what are yours? Those expectations are okay. Now what are we going to do about okay. it? It's too easy to say, I want this and you're not giving it to me. Exactly. You know, that's and the that will not that. help resolve mm, not issues. Help at all. Um, Braz asks <coughs> a very interesting question, which many couples I'm sure grapple with, and especially with blunt partners. When you have yes. somebody who just, you ask a question, they'll tell it to you as it is. They will not mm. try to sugarcoat <laughs> or be sensitive to your feelings. It gives an example of, babe, how do I look? Am I fat? Yes, you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> you look good? No, I don't look, you don't look good. Um, so, what, why do you draw the line he was asking with honesty? I mean, yeah. can you be too honest? <laughs> yeah, I suppose you can actually, but one of the real key steps in everybody's life is coming to terms with reality. Mm -hmm. And so you ought to be able to answer questions like, what do I look like? Well, frankly, you put a bit of weight on, you know. You ought to be able to say that mm -hmm. because the truth is you ought to both acknowledge it. And then if you don't like being fat, do something about it, you know. But yes, you have to, I think the thing is not honesty, a boundary to honesty. It's about what your intentions are. If, if the intention of being honest is to be kind, that you're actually trying to be kind and nice to your partner, then tell the literal truth. But if, if you're tempted to say something which is a little bit hurtful, well then don't. Okay. You see what I mean? But, but if you want to say they're fat, but you don't want to hurt their feelings, and you want to be honest. You, yeah, at the end of the day, you're going to have to, you don't have to say it, but you don't have to say, you're fat, do something about it. Yeah. You could be gentle and say, you know, I think you and I are putting on a bit of weight. Maybe we should do something about it, you know. So make it a couple problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so interesting. Uh, and you bring in an interesting aspect of <coughs> weight, because that is a big issue for some couples. I remember I was talking to somebody and they said, for them, if they do ever get married, they would want a contract signed on the side <laughs> saying, that in the events in our marriage you add weight yeah. that is enough grounds to dissolve the marriage <laughs> <laughs> so we'll talk about that but first let's speak to judy who's calling judy good morning morning to you thanks for calling yes my name is judy mm -hmm. i've been married for four years right now my husband mm -hmm. said the wife but the wife passed away okay now, the, the, it has come to a zero point. Mm -hmm. the, the children are really disturbed. And they are big, they are not small. Yeah. Because they have a wife and they have a husband. Now I'm trying to bring up the children together with me, but it is becoming so hard for me. And I'm saying, can I leave that marriage now? Okay, um, let me just clarify at some points I did not get very clearly. You're talking about there was a wife who passed on, and now you are tasked with taking care of your children and that uh, the woman's children yes. as well? Yes, and I have my own kids. And you have, so uh, the question is what exactly? The question is, can I leave the husband? Because they are still uh, discussing about the thing of marriage. Okay. And now it has reached a point I want to meet that husband. How can I do it? With, how can I deal with that situation? All right. So you're thinking of a divorce, in essence. Yes. Okay. Because we did a Christian marriage. All right. Thank you, Judy, for watching and for calling in. Um, Tight position Judy is in? Yes, I didn't fully understand it. You're going to have um, to she's uh, married to yes. a man who uh, lost a wife. Right. And he had children from that other marriage, yes. and now they have children. So they've got a blended family. So there's a family. whole blended family, and it's a bit taking a toll on her. It's too much. She doesn't feel she can do all of this, parenting mm -hmm. all of them. Um, so she's uh, contemplating divorce. She wants to leave. Right. Well, I, I, I think she should think twice. I think she ought to try and tackle the core problems first. Mm -hmm. First of all, establish what they are. I mean, if it is simply that it's too much work looking after this large family, then she needs to talk to the husband and say, I need help. 
if, if really what she's saying, uh, between, written between the lines, is there are some other problems in the marriage, then she needs to put those on the table and say, come on, these are the issues. Mm. I do understand her thinking about leaving, and strangely enough, that's often a very good catalyst to the start of those conversations. If she is seriously thinking about leaving, then it's going to put a little bit of steel into the conversation, isn't it? She's mm. not going to let the matter drop. She should say to herself that she's in an either-or. Either I leave, or we solve these problems. We do not continue going on the same path. Mm. And then, in effect, she can put that on the table, saying, I'm really at my wit's end. I need your help to solve these problems. Otherwise, I'm going to have to leave. But it is, is it ever a good place to begin a conversation, especially in such a serious issue, it's about <coughs> leaving, by saying, I want to leave? It sounds like giving an ultimatum. Because then, if you come and tell me that, I'll be like, OK. You know, you're not coming yep. here very friendly, wanting to solve <laughs> issues. You're coming wanting to, re uh, to, to already, you know, get out of the relationship, to leave. Yeah. Let me just put it this way. It's far better than just leaving without having the conversation. Okay. You know, the worst thing you can ever do is get to the point where one day you just pack your bags and go and the poor guy comes home to an empty house. Yeah. Um, so that's the worst. The next worst is the one we've just talked about, where you actually say, I'm thinking of leaving. A better one yet is not to actually say you're leaving, but to start the process of leaving. Mm -hmm. Start to think about it, start to imagine where you would live, what you, what, perhaps you might need a new job, whatever. Mm -hmm. You think, 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 until it's very clear in your mind how to do it. Now, your spouse will pick that up, even though you never say the words, because you'll walk a little taller and you'll be just a little more independent. Mm -hmm. And when you raise these issues, you'll raise them a little more firmly. Okay. Because these are now no longer small matters. These are the reason why you're thinking of going. Okay. And you're able to say now, we must solve this problem. You don't actually say necessarily, I'm leaving. All right. But he'll pick up that point. He will. Yeah, because in the credit of the husband and the credit of the marriage, when they got married, he had the kids from the other marriage. So oh. she was in the know of that. Yes, it's not a surprise yeah. problem that has crept up. So I like that you said there needs to be that very clear conversation that for me it has gotten so bad that I'm thinking of leaving, but say it in a nice way. Uh, but also be very honest to herself, guess Judy, you know, if there's any other issue. Yes. Because if that's not it alone, then the rest you know, needs to be addressed. Most people cope with children. Yeah. So my suspicion is that she hasn't told us the whole story. Yeah. It's not just the fact that there's three, four, five children, whatever it is. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, children can be taught to help in the house. Husbands yeah. can help in the house. You can get a maid. There are lots of solutions to a problem of a lot of children. Yeah. Yeah. So I suspect that something else is going on. Or could it be, and maybe we should have engaged her <coughs> on that, sometimes you have these other kids come on and some would either be disrespectful, I'm not saying yeah. other situation, disrespectful, uh, disrespectful to yes. her, um, and, sh you know, constantly reminding that you're not our mother and yes. he's actually our In father. In fact, there's a, there's a very good route to dealing with that, mm -hmm. which is that whoever brings the children into the marriage remains responsible for their discipline. Yeah. So if I bring two children into marriage, it it's my responsibility to make sure they behave properly and pull their weight in the household and so on. That may not be happening. Mm -hmm. You know, it may well be that he's the sort of father who stays out late and leaves her managing the children. Right. And of course, you're quite right. They will resent her trying to persuade them to do things. It's his job to do that. Now, if that's what's going on, she needs to say that. She needs to say, I need you here, I need you to discipline these children and to make them understand what they need to do in the house. Okay, excellent. Our time is up, but Chris, finally, to those married people, newly married, been married 20, 30 years, um, for you the biggest tip to keep it hot? And that you're talking about spicing up marriage. Yeah, I mean, the, the simple thing is this. Marriage is happy. Mm -hmm. Marriages are happy. If yours is not, do something about it. Don't just allow it to drift into an unhappy state. Okay. And the starting point, as I say, is being honest with one another. Being honest with yourself. Understanding what your expectations are and understanding your partner and putting mm. a lot of effort into being with them, being affectionate with them. Do that and most marriages will sort themselves out no matter how bad they've got. Okay. So it is possible to have a good, happy marriage. Spice it up. Um, if you're having trouble, as Chris has said, it's on you. To, to, to raise the issues at hand and um, be true to yourself and talk it out with your husband or wife. Thank you very much for watching the show.